Okay, so what are we making? We are making rainbow stew. And what do we have for the ingredients? We're going to be using the rest of this white bean and kale veggie deli slices. It has 11 grams of uh, protein for three and a half slices. We're going to be using all this beautiful rainbow. We have some red, it's got orange, we have yellow, beautiful chard. On top of that, a giant yellow squash. We're going to add a fresh, this is a brown onion. We're going to be adding to it a whole peel plum tomatoes. And we're going to be put frying this in a cast iron pan. So come and see how I plan to make this rainbow stew. Should be wonderful. Welcome to Healthy Vegan Living. All right, step one, you open your, your cans and you put them in your seasoned cast iron pan. We'll get the rest of that in a minute. Then put it on the stove right away and put it on medium heat and start cooking it. You're going to need more than just this for a liquid because you're going to be cooking all of these rainbow charred in the sauce. So let's move ourselves over to the stove, which is about over here. Move this over here like that. Okay. And we're gonna turn on the we're gonna put the burner at medium at five. Once that starts, the next thing we're going to do, wipe off a little bit of the tomato sauce I got on the brand, brand new bamboo board I just got. We're going to show you how to take care of these. Now what you want is you do want the leaves, but not the stem. Save the stems for your broth, when you're making broth. Okay, so then once your leaves are separated, then just simply make a, a pile out of them and you're going to be cutting them into ribbons. Now here's some beautiful yellow chard. What we're going to do is we're just going to cut that out. Okay, you've seen me do this before if you've been watching my other videos. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be quiet and we can just zip this through. All right, so the stove is boiling. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add this water to it. So what we did is we added 14 ounces of water to it. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your knife, and you're just simply gonna cut these beautiful old tomatoes in half. Now, a can of these tomatoes gives you 10 milligrams of sodium. That is nothing. So if you're worried about salt, this is going to be a very low salt dinner and I'm doing it on purpose because many people think that there is too much salt in vegan cooking and I try my best to lower my salt and lower my oil. Now you see right now, it's basically just tomatoes with water. It's going to boil up. We'll be cutting these into something like a ribbon a green ribbon and it'll be cooking in here. Then you see how bright and green this is? It's gonna turn into dark green and that's the one you know it's ready. It takes about an hour. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take these stems here and we're gonna put them in a, in a bag and we're gonna save them for when I make soup. And I make a lot of vegetable broth because I love vegetable broth with my vegetables. So I'm just gonna temp temporarily put them here. Now when you have something like this, you take your knife 
and you roll this over like this, one big gigantic, like think of it as a giant head roll, a monster head roll. And then you just simply, so take it this big gigantic bundle and then take your knife, whatever knife you use, whether it's a sharp one or this $2 knife. And what you do is take, trim off the edges and then cut off. What you're looking for is strands like this. So again, we're going to be quiet while we cut this off so we can speed through this. Okay, as soon as this is boiling, as you can see, it's nice hot. Slowly put in your chard, your rainbow chard. And it looks like a lot. It's a giant bowl, but believe me, it will all fit in here. It will shrink down. It's not exactly similar to, to uh, spinach where you have 40 bags and you're lucky if you have half a cup. You're gonna have some good bulk here. It's gonna be delicious, especially being rainbow chart. So then slowly maneuver the chart into the sauce. You may have to pick it up some of the of the tomatoes, the whole peeled tomatoes and put it on top. Now right now you have no seasoning. All you have you have 20 milligrams of salt. And that's it. So then you put some more on top. And you're just going to maneuver this in into the tomatoes. And if you need, if you, I'm not going to walk away. But if you have to walk away, remember to set a timer for 60 minutes. This bright green is going to turn dark green and that's when it's ready to eat. Chard is a little thicker than spinach so it takes a little longer time to cook. See, there's plenty of room right over here. And take the rest and just put it on top. So now all your chard that giant rainbow chard that I showed you at the beginning is all inside this frying pan. And you're gonna keep it at... Okay, the next thing we're gonna do next is we're gonna cut this up and we're gonna saute this brown onion. Hmm. May not be any good. Thank goodness we have extra ones. Hey honey, this onion looks kind of weird. Look at it. It's not good anymore. That's not good. Okay, so that's no good. We're going to try a different onion. Now, right now, the frying pan is almost full. So we can't use this entire delicious squash. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it in half. I'm gonna save this for another meal. 
we're going to now, we're going to, it's already been washed, but you're going to peel this off. Now, if you grew this in your backyard, you wouldn't need to peel it. But this comes from Mexico, where they don't have the very best guidelines for pesticides. So why take the chance of ingesting it? You're pulling off maybe 1 seconds of an inch of squash. You might be losing some of the nutrients from the skin, but you're going to be getting enough from the rest of the squash to work. Okay, this would go in your compost heap. Then the next thing you do is you're going to cut it about an eighth of an inch diame diameter, something like this. See how thick that is? And just as before, I'll be quiet so we can zip through this. check the puppy paws make sure they're okay because I stepped on them and they're okay hurts a little bit this is Joy's Joy's footprints in the kitchen now remember forget to clean your hands off when you're picked up a dog or something different To aid this, I put in one teaspoon of extra virgin olive oil just to help cook it a little bit faster. You see how dry it is? The purpose is to try to get it as translucent as possible, almost cooked before you put it into your sauce. I've also reduced the sauce from five to three because it's cooking just fine. The heat retention in the cast iron pan is doing that. We're going to put this in with the onions. So that they slowly start to cook before we stick it in the sauce. in the charred tomato sauce. Kind of hard here towards the end. Now you notice I'm not using a cast iron pan for this. It's just that's what it was available without having to rush to the cupboard to get what I wanted. But it'll be just fine. Just make, make sure that when you're using a silicone pan or use a rubber instrument or a plastic instrument. As soon as you have your onions are brown like this, can you see it? Then take all of this and put it in your cast iron pan, slowly. So the heat's going on over here. We're gonna turn the heat here off. And then we're going to use, we're just going to lay those on top. These are the squash. We're going to mix in the onion.
just love stabbing stew on a nice warm day. The best thing about it is that the next day I can eat this cold and it's just wonderful. Move this to a different size so it doesn't sit on the grill. Now the next part to do You're going to incorporate the squash, a yellow squash. It could be anything. It could be zucchini. It could be in this zucchini or gorgets in Great Britain. It can be any squash you have, but I have yellow squash. And you're going to mix in the onion. Now I know, you see how full this? You're going to pick it up on the bottom and move it up so that you are displacing, you're moving the squash to be on the bottom of the pan. And right now, slowly you can start to see that the chard is turning color from bright green to dark green. It's almost ready to eat. I'm just going to keep on doing that until we get basically fall f coating the squash with the sauce, the stew sauce, the chard. Not easy to do, but just gotta play with it. And leave it in here until it starts to be translucent itself, which gets to be soft, and it'll be ready to eat. Now, I added a very small amount of garlic salt. It's more like an Italian meal, an Italian stew. But what you're doing is you're using a huge amount of rainbow chard in it. Another way for you to use rainbow ch chard or any kind of chard that you have in your garden is to make stews out of it. Okay, we'll see you in a little bit. The very, very last step that we're putting in here is the white bean and kale. And the reason why we didn't put it now is because we wanted to make sure that we cooked the squash and we cooked the chard completely. This is almost ready, maybe last five minutes. So next what we'll be doing is dicing this and putting it in on the top. Now of course there are some proteins in the plant that I put into the, um, in the skillet. But this will assure that there will be plenty of protein for the entire meal. So what I'm going to do is I'm dicing this to about a quarter of an inch and then I'm going to dice it the other way. And then I'm going to slowly put it inside of the frying pan. What we've done is we've taken the white bean and kale veggie deli slices, which are 13 grams for three slices, and there was about five slices left. Let's just check real quick. Looks like there was one, two, three, yeah, there was five slices left, and what we're doing is we're cutting them in one inch, one eighth of an inch, dicing it. And now what we're doing is we're going to dice it again and, and what it'll be, it'll be like little, little cubes. And I'm hoping it gets lost in the sauce. And all we're doing with this is we're going to warm it up and the meal is almost finished right now. The chard is ready to eat. The uh, squash is ready to eat. Should be a wonderful meal. All right. So you can already see the chart is not bright, bright green anymore. It's more dark. And that's how you know it's ready to grow, go. And you can see from this piece, oh, that's an onion. So it's ready to go too. But the, um, the yellow squash is also nice and soft. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna lay this on the very top like this. And then we're gonna turn around and then we're going to slowly mix it in, turn off the heat, let it rest for a few minutes, and then we're going to serve it on a plate. So we're just going to take this and we're just going to kind of mix it in there. Like that. Now, this makes an enormous room mess of your stove. 
If you have a pan that has higher walls than I do, that's what you should use. But you know, it's gonna be so delicious, it's gonna be worth the trouble of cleaning the stove. Okay, now we turn off the heat. And that for me is right over here. I don't know if you can see my hand. And I won't. we're gonna let that rest a minute, clean up the kitchen, and I'll show you what it looks like. Now. Okay, so from here, what you can do is you grab yourself a, a ladle, and you give yourself a nice, healthy serving of the chard and you can have you see these little squares there that's the the tofu and what is that thing called these little uh, squares on top that's the white bean and kale and all you're using you don't take a lot of it you're just gonna use it for flavor you really what you really want is you want the chard and the squash and of course some sauce so for that you need to have a spoon I mean this gravy spoon and we're just going to grab some of the tomato sauce and that's exactly what it's going to look like and just to show you how delicious it is I'm going to take I'm going <laughs> to not use that spoon I'm going to grab this spoon right here. I'm just going to grab this piece right here. It's kind of dark, so it's hard for you to see. And it has a wonderful flavor. Well, well, thank you for joining me on this adventure where we made some rainbow and squash soup, squash stew. We look forward to seeing you in our next video. If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.